All right, welcome back, everybody. We are at the third round today of day two of the Charlotte Pokemon 2018 Regional Championships. I'm here with Connor Finton and myself over here, and we've got a pretty nice matchup here. We have a new face that we haven't seen on stream this weekend yet, but definitely one that everybody's seen. We've got Ryan Sablehouse, and then we've got Alex Szymanski. Decks are pretty similar, but Connor, walk us through a couple of the differences between them and what the decks are in the first place. So Alex and Ryan are both playing this Buzzwell Lycanroc deck. It's a deck we've seen a lot of popularity uh, throughout the weekend. Um, both of these players, of course, very accomplished, great players. They're going to both be putting their all in this game. Um, there's not a, a ton of differences other than their tech cards that are all techs, really, for the mirror match. Um, Ryan is playing two of the Nani X Mew from Fates Collide. Uh, it lets him copy the attacks of a, of a basic Pokemon on his bench. So he's going to be copying his, uh, maybe his Buzzwolves attacks to uh, do more damage to Alex's Buzzwolves. And then on Alex's side, he's playing one of Octillery from Guardians Rising. Um, it has the attack that everyone knows it for, Supernatural, Supernatural Dance. It's going to put 10 damage on Ryan's side of the field for each uh, Pokemon in Ryan's discard pile, but it also has another attack that does 30 damage as long as there's a stadium in play, which there should be as both of these players are playing heavy Brooklet, Brooklet Hill counts. Now, getting into the game, though, it looks like we are live on the cameras here. We do see it looks like Ryan is going to start the series between the two of them. Pretty important in this kind of matchup. Um, going second isn't the worst, but what isn't great is the fact that Alex is forced to start with his copy of Regirock. Yeah, Regirock is never going to attack in this matchup. Nope. Um, it's It can, it I guess. not be a reason to ever do it. But uh, it's, you know, it's also got a very big retreat cost. You're going to have to use one of your float stones. And he is playing four float stones, so that shouldn't be a huge deal. But he has to attach that one of them to that Regirock to get it out of the active position and be able to attack this turn. Now, do you see Ryan? He does end up going with the Cynthia play here, um, shuffling in to get a new hand. But before that, he does actually get a Rock Ruff down and an energy onto that Buzzwool. Um, it being a strong energy is kind of important here just because of the fact that they don't need a player plays Enhanced Hammer, so are a lot safer. Um, and taking a look at the prizes, though, it's going to be a little bit rough for Ryan with some of these Max Elixirs because one of the Max Elixirs themselves are prized and two basic fighting and a strong energy in there as well. Not the most ideal scenario for him. Another thing that's going to be kind of rough on the other side for Alex is that he prized two of his three Buzzwool GX. Right, so yeah. he's going to be looking at only one that he has to be able to use at first. Um, there is a Brooklet Hill in place, so he'll find out pretty quickly that it's not going to be, you know, it's, whoop, can't do double Brooklets. Um, but he's going to use that, and he's going to find out just right away that there's only that one Buzzwool as he goes through. And that, that one Buzzwool means if this Buzzwool gets knocked out, uh, he's going to have to rely on maybe Lycanrocks. He might even attack with this this Regirock. Yep. Who knows? <laughs> we were just we may be eating our hordes pretty quickly on that, um, but I can see him. He's going to be going probably to use a lot of his tech cards, like his Oracorio and everything here, and possibly even his Sudo Udo to try to put some damage on. So that way he can take prizes and see if he can find one of the Buzzwolves as early as possible. He does decide he's just going to throw that strong energy onto the Buzzwool. Go and uh, do the damage, and ooh, that, yeah, that's Sycamore. He discarded two basic fighting energies and a Bismol off that. Not the most ideal scenario either, and I find it interesting. He did already have that float zone right off the bat, despite having two of them in his prize cards. If you notice, this hand, though, for Alex is almost ideal. He's got another energy for next turn, an elixir. He's got Octillery in his hand, drew the... Uh, drew the uh, the Remoraid and the Rock Ruff off of it? Yeah, that was actually a pretty ideal scenario for him after dumping a of those bad cards with Sycamore. Um, 90 damage does hit the board, and he's putting the pressure on that Remoraid and saying you have to evolve it. Ryan answers it and gets that artillery board so that way he doesn't have to worry about the Remoraid getting knocked out due to the secondary damage from Buzzwool's Jet Punch. Now Ryan's thinking here, he's got this hand is, uh, it looks like it's just a bunch of supporter cards. Yeah, he's he had three Guzmas. Three Guzmas, he's got a float stone, so you can kind of use that Guzma somewhat, but uh, he's probably going to have to, he doesn't really have a lot of options. If he goes for those Guzma here, he can try to grab his own Regirock, so that way he can take a knockout on either the Reverade or the Rock Ruff on the bench. Uh, he's going to Sycamore, just cards three Guzmas and a Lycanroc. Now, I never like to call things really early, but this is going to be an incredibly difficult matchup for Ryan going forward. Prizing three energy, discarding three Guzmas right off the bat, that's not something that's healthy for him whatsoever. He does hit an energy here as well as his pseudo Udo, so he's going to be able to uh, get his energy attachment for the turn, uh, but I don't see any... 
he does have the max flicker, so he could put some pressure down with that ultra ball looking for his Mew if he wants already, or just to kind of, you know, keep the jet punches going. A couple different routes as he goes into his deck here with the Brooklyn Hill. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to see him go grab a, a buzzball with this Brooklyn Hill, play that elixir, get some energies down, at least put some pressure on. Um, uh, Alex still does need another strong energy to be able to jet punch this buzzwell active for knockout. So I expect we'll see this buzzwell on the bench start to power up and try to take an early knockout on Alex's buzzwell. Uh, start starting as soon as next turn. Yeah, the buzzwell does come down from that Brooklyn Hill, so we're probably going to see the Max Luxury and everything here. Um, I don't really think we're going to actually see the Mew or anything come out just yet, just because it. it Probably doesn't need to. Doesn't have, the extra damage isn't going to make a difference just yet without a choice band most of the time. Um, I feel like that's going to be the ideal scenario. Is always making sure that you have a choice band on that Mew, so it's not just adding 30, but 60 damage actually due to the weakness. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Mew being a psychic type cannot benefit from cards like Regirock or the strong energy, so those other damage multipliers don't add up. So you're just going to be swinging there, taking two shots on these buzzwolves. And then we also see the Ultra Ball discarding that Pseudo Udo. Now, something to note is that Ryan Sableholz plays a 10th energy, but because of that, he does not opt to play Super Odd. So any Pokemon that hits his discard pile is not coming back. He has no way to recover Pokemon, no way to recover energy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much just gone forever uh, at that point. So Ryan, Ryan here, he's looking, he, he's thinking, what do I want to grab? What, what is this last Pokemon with this Ultra Ball that I really need? This is where you think he might be going for the Mew if he's going to be attacking with it this turn, but otherwise I'd probably think he's going to be holding it. Um, I, I like the idea of grabbing the Lycan Rock here, but unfortunately because he doesn't have that Reggie Rock, it's not like he can use it to try to knock out the Rock Ruff or the Rage just yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in uh, why he decided to grab the Lycan Rock here. It's, um, he's, you'd have to assume if he's going to grab it this turn, Use his resource this turn to go grab it. That he's going to, uh, he's going to use it for the abyssal hand. Got so it. Thin, thin, thins out his hand. Maybe he's like, maybe I'll hit the Regirock rock off of this, to be able to do something. But he doesn't. So now he's just holding this hand. Uh, there's a sycamore, a floatstone, a couple of decent cards. He's definitely not a yeah. not an awful hand going into this next turn. He hit that sycamore there off the abyssal uh, hand, which otherwise his hand was actually he didn't really have much going on. So that was definitely a saving grace. Um, we're going to see a little bit of an explosive turn here from Alex, just because we know what his hand looks like based on last turn. Uh, evolving, uh, forcing this Rockruff, uh, the 30 damage out of this Rockruff is also really big in this matchup. Uh, it means that Alex is going to have to evolve that Rockruff into a Lycanroc right now if he doesn't want it to get knocked out by a Jet Punch. And that means that he's going to have to use his Bloodthirsty Eyes ability on his Lycanroc Jix mm. this turn. A whiff on the max selection from Alex. Definitely a big one there because he wanted to get that energy on the Pseudo Udo. Having the energy and everything already in play makes it really, really nice so you don't have to worry about a giant knuckle impact or anything like that coming from a bus wall because you've got an immediate response to it. Another thing that's really nice is this uh, the draw off of that Abyssal Hand. Alex draws into a Sycamore when he had previously no draw supporter in hand. He also hit a Guzma. He's got Float Stones down, so he has options. Uh, there's a couple of different things he can do. Uh, knowing that he's not going to knock out this Buzzwell this turn, maybe he goes for something like a Guzma on the Artillery. He decides not to. Um, but we do see the Sycamore at least coming down. Um, when he goes through the deck here, now another thing to also mention is that he does play Energy Switch. So unlike Ryan, Ryan is not playing any copies of Energy Switch. Alex has a little bit more flexibility in where he puts his attachments. Um, and it also allows him for a little bit more of a surprise play, being able to set up a Lycanroc a little bit quicker, a couple different ways. Yeah, so he decides to go to Lycanroc and doesn't use the ability. He's saying, okay, I'm going to put this Buzzwell down to 10 HP left, and uh, it's just going to get knocked out by a, a Jet Punch on the bench at some point, or if it can't get out of the active, it's just completely stuck there. Uh, right. Ryan doesn't have any real good way to get it out of the active with the choice pin on it. Uh, he's playing no Fury Bell, I mean, sorry, no Field Blower, and no copies of a card like Acerola to go pick it up. So his only out to get out of the active is. Um, going to be Guzma, and he doesn't want to. He wants to knock out this Buzzwell. He doesn't want to knock out. He also doesn't really want to use else. his last Guzma. Yeah, oh, that's he true. He discarded yeah. the three. He did. He discarded the three in the first turn. So. Just, yeah, he's just in some tight spots here. I, I'm probably going to see him looking to try to make a knockout on this opposing Buzzwell, but I don't know that it's really going to be feasible. Um, hitting for a hundred is going to be too short, so he would need both the Reggie Rock and the second strong energy to commit there. Or a manual retreat and a max electron on the bench buzzwell. There's not a lot of scenarios where that's going to happen. 
Um, but he decides that he's going to go for the Bloodthirsty Ice here to put damage on this Lycanroc instead. Yeah, I like that play. It means that he's going to set up this Buzzwell on the bench for maybe a potential Jet Punch play later in the game. Uh, he's also going to throw some damage on this, this Lycanroc um, that doesn't have anything on it. There's no Floatstone. Uh, Alex is playing four Floatstone, but two of them are already on the board. One's in those prize cards, so there's only one Floatstone left in Alex's deck mm -hmm. at the moment. There are four Guzmas, of course, but if he uses a Guzma, he's not... He's probably not taking a knockout on anything other than maybe that artillery. Which, to be honest, is the only reason I'm a little hesitant on that bloodthirsty eyes, you know, there if you're Ryan, just because of the fact that you kind of played right into the Guzma. Alex already wanted to play Guzma that next turn, I feel, to be able to knock out both the artillery and the Buzzwool at the same time. I like the being able to take three prizes and taking that artillery off the board. Um, however, I mean, it's just... Uh, you just kind of gave him the Guzma anyways. You yeah. said, hey, you want to do it? Well, now I'm going to make sure you're going to be playing it anyways. Um, so we do see, and he does have it in hand. Right. It was one of the first cards that's there. So I don't think that the, the Guzma play, I think the Guzma play was inevitable at this point, though. Right. There's two There's two uh, Pokemon on Alex's bench with float stones, so they can just be sent right up and retreat right back to the bench. Uh, yep. You're kind of conceding that, okay, you're going to do this, um, and me, I'd rather put this damage on the Lycanroc than put it on the Buzzwool. Uh, he was going to discard that Lycanroc anyway, and we did see Ryan's other Lycanroc GX hit the hit the discard pile off of a Sycamore earlier in the game. Right, so he and definitely wanted to make sure that he didn't completely lose the opportunity to be able to Dangerous Rogue. Um, the energy attachment did hit the Lycanroc as well. Um, Ryan's board has got to be feeling pretty comfortable. You know, he's got more energy and everything than Alex right now, and having one on the Lycanroc and the two on the Buzzwole, he has two different attackers that are ready to go. Ready to go to not just do a jet punch, though. Ready to go to take a big knockout. And he's also got two Pokemon on the board that have this as well. Ooh, so this it, is going to be nice. Yeah. So Alex says, I don't want to go to odd prize cards this, this turn. Or at least he's like, maybe maybe give me another out to get the Octillery knocked out to go back to even prize cards. Um, this is going to keep him in a better position. Uh, one thing to note is how strong uh, Ryan's board is just more developed. Now, Alex is going to take this early lead, um, and he's probably going to lose his artillery soon, but he does have more energy on board, uh, and that's going to allow him uh, to take these knockouts faster, and if he can hit something like a crucial end, and Shemansky doesn't draw out of it, mm -hmm. then he's in a pretty good spot moving forward. Now, going in, Ryan, do you see him draw the Regirock there right off the top? Um, he wants to probably take a knockout on this Buzz this turn, but at the same time, you have to be really, really careful because that Sudowoodo is sitting on the bench. You want to be careful of what attacks you use. You don't really want to just give your opponent the out to be able to use it. Um, Alex has already used his Super Rod, so I think Ryan knows that if he's able to take this Sudowoodo out, he's not going to be able to see it for the rest of the game. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the Mew come down this turn. Mew, Choice Ban, mm -hmm. a Fighting Energy will knock out the Buzzwool. That's, that's kind of what I was thinking as well. That's the only real way to knock out this boss wall as well as still putting um, nothing at risk to be able to put that Sudowoodo. And you can put 630 more damage on the Sudowoodo, so at that point, it's just one jet impact away from getting the knockout itself. So Ryan, understanding that, that lot, you know, the, the numbers, understanding exactly the math. He's played this matchup several times already in the first two days. I believe this is actually his sixth mirror that he's played throughout both days. So using that knowledge, using that information to make sure he calculates everything throughout and understands where he's going throughout the entire matchup. Yeah. Ryan, of course, is just a very amazing player and knows exactly what he needs to do in these matchups to get himself to a winning position. Ryan is not a stranger to these top tables, and uh, his play style and skill uh, really shows that. Yeah, and talking about this right here, I mean, we've got Ryan on right now. We even had his brother Kyle on on the first round, so it's always a really great story to see these kind of family scenarios play out. If you can actually see both Ryan and Kyle in the top eight of the same event, it's really, you know that's got to really feel good for them. Uh, this is a pretty local event for them as well. They're actually from South Carolina. Um, their parents are here. Their significant others are here. So that's got to just be really an awesome feeling coming from a player standpoint to be able to see that kind of thing play out. Um, and again, from Ryan and Kyle, like, they just really would love to have that. Um, they've been both playing for a very, very long time since early senior division, actually, for both of them, which for those who don't know, back then was actually called 11 to 14. Um, and it was something that happened pretty often back then back you know double top eights for the both of them but it's been a while yeah another interesting thing you talk about how ryan here and, and his brother kyle are both like top great players alex on the other side 
also has a brother who plays this game competitively and at a, right. a similar high caliber of play. Uh, Alex's brother Christopher recently uh, top but four. I do want to cut in here real quick though. I do want to point out that Ryan did get that choice band for the Mew that he was looking for and the fighting energy and was able to actually take out that knockout on the buzz wolf, put the Sudowoodo up to that 60 damage and setting that Lycanroc up. Lycanroc being at 110 as well, if one of his buzz wolves gets enough damage modifiers, he could really put himself in a situation to take that same triple prize scenario that Alex actually just did to him. Yeah, that would be a great play from uh, Ryan's side of the board. All he really needs is a strong energy and a way to get the, get the, bring that Lycan Rock up, and he just takes uh, he takes three prize cards on the turn, which is very strong. So. And here we do see Alex pulling out his own stops. There's that Oracorio you were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's gonna go come up one energy. It's gonna take a knockout on this active, and it is resistant to the fighting type that uh, these Buzzwolves have. And uh, Ryan, of course, only has the one Guzma, so it's going to be sticking active probably for a while. Yeah, I don't see. I mean, that's something that Alex can really take advantage of here is not having access to those Guzmas and everything there. So it's going to be a little bit of an easier scenario for him to be able to kind of pull that off and use that Gorgor Corio as a kind of little mini wall for the time being. And there's that energy switch right in time for Alex. He understands that there's a good chance that this Sudowoodo is going to get knocked out at some point. There's not really that need to have that energy there anymore to pose that threat. I'm just going to be putting up something like an Oracorio. So I'm just going to move it off there and make sure that if he does go for the Jet Punch here, that I'm not going to get penalized for it. Yeah, I think we're really going to see Ryan's uh, discard of those Guzmas early be the detriment to his game. This energy on that Rock Ruff now... Only one more energy, and Alex can use Lycanroc's GX attack, Dangerous Rogue, to just take two prize cards coming up here. Right. Uh, Alex already has an easy knockout on this uh, Mew with the, the uh, Oracorio on his bench. So we're just going to see a knockout here with Revelation Dance, uh, unless there's more than five Pokemon in Ryan's deck, which I do not believe there are. Um, actually, to be honest, I think there might have been. Um, so I, I think Alex may have wanted to count there to make sure, because Ryan's had a lot of discards. I know he's got an entire Lycanroc line in there. He's got at least one Buzzful. Um, he may have actually had like six or seven Pokemon in there. But I, I, I hope that Alex, you know, he probably made sure to make sure that those couple of scenarios, but you do have both attacks and everything that you're able to use. Um, Lycanroc coming up just because it has this float zone and everything here for Ryan. Um, he's got to make a couple calculated moves here. I did see that other energy switch over in Alex's hand. So, funny enough, we talked about the energy moving off the Sudowoodo, but if he decides to say, you know what, this Oracorio is a pain, I'm going to use a big attack, like a, a knuckle impact or something for the Buzzwool to be able to take it out. He can actually just put the energy right back to the Sudowoodo again and still pose that same threat that we were talking about. He decides to go to the Lele. The Lele is only going to get hit for 30 here. Uh, but it does mean that if the uh, Lele does come up and attack, all that Shemansky really needs is, you know, an energy and a Lycanroc. And he's got the game locked up uh, right there. Yeah, I mean, I think he understands, so he's actually yes. going to be going for that to be able to take it out. He uses that last Guzma, you know, again, he's telegraphing that over to Alex, which does put him in this awkward spot, but Ryan understood that Alex has a win condition here with this Rock Ruff. I don't want to give it to him, even if it means playing my last Guzma to finish this. Here's the energy switch. Here it is. So Alex Fermansky goes up a game 1-0 and oh in this series against Ryan Sablehouse with that surprise second energy switch to be able to pull off the Dangerous Rogue. Got to feel pretty confident here for Alex. Must feel really good seeing even when your opponent's playing those Mews. Alex said, I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm going to put the pressure down, and he's going to start this series off 1-0. and oh. Yeah, yes. It was interesting how much that, uh, that Oracorio really came into play there. We were talking about even like yesterday when Alex was on stream the first time. We were like, what is that for? What can it do? Do, but I mean, of course, we saw right there. It can, you know, it, it hits a buzzwool for weakness. It knocks out these baby mews that the uh, and that this buzzwool does. Yeah, and the big mews too. With a strong, with a choice band, it does. It knocks out a mew ex that a lot of people are playing for this matchup. So it's, it's almost like it's a tech for the tech, right? In his deck, which is uh, an interesting thing. Something we don't see a whole bunch. Um, but yeah, most people know that Oracorio as the night march killer and expanded. You play it. You use Supernatural Dance, take a bunch of prize cards. But here, Alex is actually using more often the other attack, mm -hmm. the one that we, we don't see very often on that or Oracorio. So it's an interesting new use of a card that we've seen a lot of play previously in other tournaments. And we do see Ryan and everything here. He does mulligan that first hand, so he's going to give Alex an extra card. A um, little bit more likely that he'll use N here than other scenarios, just because he's not going to be playing that Bridget. But he only has two copies, so it's... 
probably likely that Alex is going to actually get to keep that extra card, despite Ryan getting to go first. And by extra card, I mean two extra cards now. So yeah, as these build up, maybe Ryan's more like, man, maybe I do want to go get this in. Maybe I don't want to let him have these extra cards. You always see that, especially now in the game, it used to be, okay, well, I mulliganed you know, multiple times, I'll just play an end, but then since uh, Bridget has become that primary turn one supporter, every time you mulligan, it's a little bit worse because your opponent's more likely to keep those cards. Right. All right, looking for start here. Alex did uh, open also with a Remorade and a Remorade as well, so he's got a pretty nice start for himself there, and it looks like he pulls a Buzz School and actually pulled like two different basics right off those top two cards, so he gets puts one of them down as an additional, uh, but definitely a much better start for him than that Reggie Rock last game. And it's always great uh, when you drop Pokemon off those mulligans because even if your opponent does any of basic Pokemon, you can bench them. And uh, now Ryan does have two Fighting Energies prized again and a Max Elixir prized again, um, but not as rough. There's not a strong in there as well, so you know he shouldn't have too many issues. Um, Alex does prize one Buzz this time, but not two. It's a little bit better. And Ryan does miss his first Max Elixir. Uh, one thing: these Max Elixirs, and especially in this matchup, are absolutely massive. Uh, the, a lot of this game comes down to who can swing harder first. We didn't really see that last game, but sometimes these, these uh, Buzzwell decks just kind of turn into cannons shooting at each other, and it's whoever can keep their, uh, their, their attacks going the longest that ends up winning the game. Yep. Now, those Max Elixirs, unfortunately, like you said, they are going to be crucial, and if they can't go Ryan's way, he's going to have a big problem being able to stay up to speed and keep up with Alex in this matchup if he's able to hit them and Ryan is not. Yeah, Ryan was joking with us before this match that he's going to come on stream and miss all of his Max Elixirs, and uh, he's on track for this game, at least. Yep. Now, Brooklyn Hill going in here, right off the top, you see three strong energies right next to each other. Kind of be a little bit frustrating to see your deck, not, you know, not randomize in the same way that you'd like to. Uh, Buzzwool does come down at the bench, though, so he does get his first Buzzwool down here. This is a pretty healthy turn for Ryan. Two Buzzwools, a Rock Ruff, a Sudowoodo, and the Remorade. Um, hopefully an energy off this Max Elixir, and he's fine. Ooh, well. He again. Yeah, there's multiple fighting energy in his hand and in his prize cards, so... The chances on those Max Elixirs are worse. Of course, the Max Elixir on your turn one, that's when you expect to hit it the most because Ryan. you haven't played all your fighting energies. But, yeah. but at this point, Ryan only has one other Max Elixir in his deck because he has that one prize. So you got to think he's probably not likely to see another Max Elixir for a while. He's going to be having to rely on these single energy attachments. And I mean, Alex doesn't know that he has one prize, but even knowing that 50% of your opponent's Max Elixirs are gone, that... It's going to be pretty likely to know a little bit more predictable than what your opponent's going to be able to do. Your opponent's not playing energy switches, so, all right, I know he can attach one energy per turn. If I can calculate, it's much easier to be able to plan out your turns and know what your opponent's going to do when they put themselves in these kind of scenarios. Yeah. Uh, Ryan also, he's not playing those energy switch cards, so every single attachment is vital, and he has to make the perfect choice every turn. There's never a time where he can, like, fake out and attach to the wrong to a different Pokemon and then charge up, uh, just change his mind and, and switch. He's committed to, to one strategy for the rest of the game. And we do see actually a strong energy going on to Alex before he decides to pass. Um, he does not play any copies of supporters there. I don't believe he has an artillery in his hand either, so right now his hand is not looking to be as strong as it can be. Um, this is probably the most ideal Sycamore that you could probably have as Ryan. Uh, discarding both of your other copies of Brooklet Hill, already having one in play, so you never have to see that card again, yeah. and you didn't really want to because it's never really going to leave. Neither player is playing a copy of Field Blower. Um, it's actually funny that getting down that first Brooklet is kind of important just because you, you know, your opponent's Brooklets then become completely yeah. dead cards. It's one less Brooklet in your deck, one less that can, you can draw into at times you don't want to. Ryan interestingly draws into like, four energy off of this, this Sycamore. So that's what happens. You play that elixir and uh, you miss it and then of course you always end up drawing into all of those energy cards right, right after. Now this rock, this boss will, will take a knockout here because of the Reggie Rock and everything. Um, and if Alex doesn't hit anything here, if he doesn't have uh, an artillery or a, you know or something it, right now it's not looking that great he didn't get to play anything last turn so you'd think it's going to be kind of a similar scenario here that memory is probably going to fall 
and he's going to have a little bit of a struggle being able to kind of keep up and keep going. Yeah, uh, both of those auxiliaries gone is not what, what Alex wants to see in this situation. But he is going to swing for 90 on this active, um, probably throw 30 on, a, on the rock rough, force him to evolve, but even if it does evolve, yeah, he puts it on the artillery. Uh, that's smart, because even if the, uh, he, Ryan wants that evolution so he can take the rock rough and the remoraid this turn. Right. If you can actually pull something off like that, that's important, that's going to be huge, but at the same time, even just hitting into this buzz wall and taking out the remoraid is fine as well, because you're hitting into what has the energy. Yes. Um, a couple different ways. Oh, we do see, he did get that max elixir off his prizes, so he finally does get to hit his first max elixir there. That's a great first prize card for Ryan. Yes. We know that half of them are gone, but he's going to need those last two to be hit to right. really be able to save this game. I actually think he has, never mind, I thought he had the other one in his hand as well. So he does have one left, though, that he'll find at some point. Um, no super odd to put back the energy to try to increase the chances but and then the strong energy coming down as well really just telegraphing that lichen rock and putting your opponent again in these uncomfortable positions ryan likes to do this you watch and you you can watch his play style he enjoys leaving his options open and he wants to make his opponent think you have an energy on your rock rough you have two on your buzz rules it's two different ways two different outlets to be able to do big damage when it comes to the time that he needs to uh, Alex just hit that other strong energy, so he's going to be able to take the knockout on this active uh, Regirock this turn. I mean, sorry, active Buzzwell this turn. So now Ryan's going to have to respond in some way, probably take a knockout, but of course Alex has that pseudo Wudo on the bench just waiting to come and uh, wreak some havoc and copy whatever attack Ryan uses against it. Yeah, and I mean, if he leaves it unchecked, he attaches a third energy, so either which way, you know, again, Alex playing the same game, making Ryan a little bit uncomfortable, saying, hey, I've got different Pokemon that can do different things in terms of responding to your big attackers, so let me see what you have, and I will respond one way or another. The good thing for Ryan here is he does have two attackers that can take these big knockouts. He's got this Rock Ruff that when it evolves into Lycanroc can use the Dangerous Rogue GX, and he has a Buzzwool that can come up and do Knuckle Impact for 160 damage and take a knockout here. Yep. Um, very smart by Alex to put the 30 on this Buzzwool because he knows that Sudowoodo, if a Knuckle Impact comes in play, is now going to be doing exactly the right amount of damage to knock out this right. Buzzwool. He makes it so he doesn't even need to find the Choice Band. Tries to make his life a little bit easier down the road because he knows he doesn't exactly have an artillery or anything. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if we actually see that Remory go down again. Ryan likes to, you know, remove his opponent's options as well. So being able to just say, hey, uh, you're never going to get artillery out. You know, it's going to make a big impact in the long game of things. Alex will have to find his super rod if he does decide to take out that Murmurate if he ever wants to get artillery out. Yeah, we're going to get an ultra ball from Ryan. So there's a couple options here. He, he can grab the Lycan Rock and try to pull something up. I'd also like to see maybe another Rock Rock just for another, like, a Guzma type out. Or he was eyeing the Remoraid just now, too. So we'll have to see what he grabs off of this Ultra Ball. He does also have the Brooklet Hill, so even if he does grab the Lycanroc here, he can always Brooklet for the Rock Ruff if he wants. Um, so a couple different ways that he can go through this scenario. Uh, Pulls the Mew to the top? It's actually kind of what I was thinking, but um, he did already attach the strong energy onto the Buzzwool, so he's not really going to be able to use it this turn. Um, but had he found a fighting energy chain and a choice band, again, he was looking at that same scenario from last game where he would have been able to take a knockout on that Buzzwool with damage already. So Ryan's probably just going to, oh, he decides to abyssal hand. He did have a Sycamore in hand. Uh, he just decides, okay, I'm just going to go play, get these cards into my hand, see what else I can draw. He decides, okay, Cynthia, um, next turn for Ryan, he can, uh, as long as he, he gets the cards for it, after he takes this knockout with the Buzzwool, he can just attach an energy to that Rock Ruff, evolve into Lycanroc, pull up a benched GX Pokemon, and take the knockout. Right. But I mean, at the same time, that Sudowoodoo is still sitting there with that energy, so if he does copy, the, if he does decide to use Dangerous Rogue, Alex can actually copy the Dangerous Rogue as well, um, using his GX attack for the game, but taking a knockout, a return knockout on that uh, Lycanroc in one hit. I do expect that we'll see uh, the Sudowoodoo copy the Knuckle Impact on the... Uh, Buzzwell this turn, and then if he is able to take that Lycanroc knockout next turn, that will be the game. Yep. So yeah, Ryan's just setting up. No reason to waste your GX attack here, I don't think. You, you're pretty sure that this Buzzwell is either going to get knocked out or something's going to get Guzma. Absolutely. So you're, you're going to reset the Knuckle Impact for next turn. 
Yeah, again, Ryan playing to his outs with that that rock rough on the bench. Alex is going to have to recognize that if he doesn't knock out this buzzwool, obviously he's got he's I mean, excuse me, if he does if he locks out the rock rough and leaves the buzzwool, he's got that as a main attacker that he can be able to use. If he decides to of course knock out the buzzwool, then all it needs is that Lycan Rock energy to be able to seal that there as well. I expect we're gonna see some sort of a lele for end this turn. Uh, Alex is trying to to stop uh, Ryan from having... Ryan just got to play all these cards and probably has the two-card combo in hand that he needs to win. Alex realizes that he's a turn behind here and uh, he needs to give himself one more turn to be able to like pull something out this game. Alex is debating before playing that top Lily. He's just, you know, maybe playing his Ultra Ball or anything in my hand. Uh, let's see if he does have to go for that end here, which I'm expecting. Um, does he opt to play it right away? Yes, he does. So both players going down to smaller hand. Ryan going to be going down to only two. Both players having Abyssal hand active at this point. So either which way, we're looking pretty sure there. Yeah. So Ryan's only going to get those two cards and his one card that he top decks for the turn, but he is going to have access to Artillery's Abyssal hand ability, which is going to be very big right here uh, in, this, in this next turn. Be actually kind of interesting, <laughs> you know what? He, he could actually put um, Alex in a situation just to stall for time if he needs to. With this pseudo Udo coming active, Alex's only switch card is actually a Guzma. He could bring up his Mew and copy uh, his Rockcroft's corner attack and just stall this pseudo Udo there until Alex is able to find a Guzma to get out. Um, and he just keeps doing or until he finds his like and rock and energy to be able to take the knockout as well. That'd be really interesting if that did happen. Uh, that's one way if he doesn't draw into an out, yeah, he just sits If he doesn't there. draw into it now, correct. I'm saying only if he doesn't hit the combination this turn, as he's looking for that game-winning combo, well, he's got a couple different ways to be able to move through. What could be even stronger, actually, is just sending up that rock rough and cornering with the rock rough, because the Guzma can't bring the rock rough back active. Yeah, it's actually probably a lot more likely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. exactly, he said he would have to. If he did that, he would actually have to Guzma and like and him. exactly, and then bloodthirsty the eyes the rock rough back up. So we'd make it a much more difficult situation for him. Well, we see the energy card, oh, energy like a rock right in Ryan's hand. Does not have to worry about it. That end said did not put a stop right. on Ryan whatsoever. Immediately flashes those cards. We see a concession go from Alex. So this is going to be a tied up series here with twenty minutes left to complete game three. Yeah. Things are actually getting pretty close here. Yeah, we have a game three. We have just under 20 minutes left. This is a pretty fast matchup, so we'll probably see a resolution. We could see our first tie on stream this round, though. No, I don't want to say it. We have avoided every single one so far, which yeah. is incredible. In a format where people are, are saying that 20% of matches are going to time, or over 20%. That's a really large number. Yeah. Like one in every five of your games are going to go to time. That yes. means that, you know, for the average player that goes through, you can't really even get to 7-2 because 50%, you know, one in five of your games are going to time. Yeah. But we haven't had a single one yet on stream. Yeah, that's ac actually incredible. Uh, part of it has been a lot of the matchups that we've uh, put on have just been, like, kind of aggressive decks. Um, kind of standard fare, but a lot of these decks still go to time quite often. A lot of those Ororak mirror matches go to time. This Buzzwell Lycanroc uh, mirror match doesn't often, but uh, yeah, it still can. As we see, there's 18 minutes left. Um, the games have, that means the games have been lasting about 15 minutes each. If they just go a little bit longer than average, they can still tie this, this round. Um, we, we do uh, have a Mew start on Ryan's side, or it looks like a Mew. I think he has a Mew and a Remoraid, so he's deciding between the two. Um, putting that Mew down early is risky just because of the fact that it's got such a low HP that it's not going to be very difficult for Alex to target it down. Um, what is nice about starting the Mew, though, is having that free retreat when you go second against the Buzzwool is really, really nice. <laughs> you can also just attach straight up to that, that Mew and just swing for <laughs> right. 120 on the first turn. I, I was originally going for the uh, the retreating into a Buzzwool to attack, but when your opponent opens with the Buzzwool, the thing that you want to attack into, yep, I, th I, don't, I don't think you really need to worry about getting it out of the active yeah. position. There is, unfortunately, a strong energy in... Uh, in Ryan's hand and not the basic fighting. I almost thought he was going to promote that Remoraid and open with it only because he's holding a float stone and a max elixir. Yeah. So it would have been a way to actually secure an energy on that view a lot easier. So I wasn't really sure which option he was going for and I could see the contemplation as he went back and forth. Um, we do see a Cynthia coming down for Alex, which leads him to a double fighting energy hand, so he does get his attachment for the turn, and gets the Remoraid down for himself as well, which is pretty nice. I think part of Ryan's thought process was, was that... Uh, 
Yeah, I think I think part of, part of his thought process was like, oh well, if I get end, this new is a much better starter. His start is still good, even if he doesn't pull off the attack with the Mew in the first turn. Oh, or I agree. If he just sits there with um, with Remorade pass, it's not good. <laughs> no, I, I I agree completely. You know, you got to make the more conservative play sometimes, and it's you know the route that he decided to go. Um, Brooklyn Hill does give Ryan his first search of the game here, but and Ryan is already holding that choice band, so if he opts to just ignore that strong energy in his hand and just go for the fighting energy, he's going to be putting a lot of damage on this puzzle. Um, maybe a, a, a kind of big prize card on Alex's side, he prized the pseudo Wudo. So uh, that's going to stop a lot of these cute uh, return knockout plays that he can do with the pseudo Wudo. Ryan did finally not prize double fighting and did not prize any max switches this game. So in terms of explosivity, we might see a little bit more from Ryan this game. Um, he does prize one of his Lycan Rocks, not that big of a deal, but the double Sycamore is kind of rough just because you want to make sure that your deck is able to stay fluid throughout the game. Um, one of them should be an early prize card, so shouldn't be anything too yeah. detrimental for Ryan as he goes through. As long as he has an opening turn or maybe even like a turn one and turn two supporter card, that Sycamore there actually could be nice. It could be a way to like charge up his hand after he's able to take this first knockout. Now seeing that first Max Elixir, that's got to be a relief for Ryan, a little bit of a different way to start this game, actually being able to connect with that Max Elixir and put himself in the position to already keep that pressure going. He can either go with the strong energy on that bus hole, or again, he's got a draw supporter in his hand. He can just say, you know what, I'm going to go for the choice pan, and I'm going to try to hit this bus hole for 120. It is an end, so he doesn't have to discard that, that strong energy in his hand, so he gets to keep that resource. And as long as he hits one of the seven, uh, sorry, the one of the eight fighting energies that are still in his deck, they'll be swinging for 120 in this first turn and still be able to put pressure maybe on that Remoraid. Uh, that's usually what these Buzzwell Lycan Rock decks like to do. They like to put the 30 on a 60 HP basic and force it into a vault, or else it's just going to get knocked out for pretty much for free. Yeah. I do know, you know, having the 30 on the Buzz Wool is also nice for the math as well. There's a couple different scenarios. You know, if you can get 60 onto a Buzz Wool, you get it to a point where it's easier to be able to knock out with you and things. Uh, but we do see, it looks like he missed that fighting energy. So, not really a big deal because I guess what? He just gets to come up and swing with the Buzz Wool anyways just due to that free retreat. It always feels a little bit bad too, though. When you have that one energy in hand, you could have attached. You're like, no, I'm going to go. He goes for the little bit of a riskier play and uh, ends up missing on it. Yeah, he does miss all the attachments in general, which kind of makes that max elixir almost like it was a miss. But, you know, he takes up, you some, you get what you got. Yeah, they're fixing the damage on the active. They'd forgotten about the choice spin, but e easy, quick fix. So. And the red rock. <laughs> they had the red rock. They had 40 damage on the active, so. They'd forgotten about the. Uh, it's easy to forget small things like that sometimes. Luckily, a quick fix. It's not a big deal. So, especially in a matchup like this, when you're talking about some so many damage multipliers, it's or motive modifiers. It's not just one thing adding to your damage. You got a buzzword with a strong energy. That's plus twenty. A choice band. That's another plus thirty. A Reggie rock. That's a plus ten. Maybe a second strong energy for another plus twenty. And on top of that as well, you know, even back in the day we had the old fighting stadium that had another 20 damage. So many different things that you had to count and make sure of. Yeah, that's kind of like fighting's, uh, like almost like the fighting archetypes just have all these little damage multipliers. You see Buzzle's attack, only 30 damage on Jet Punch. We have seen multiple 90 uh, damage Jet Punches on the active. Just a few years ago, the most dominant card in the format was Darkrai EX. Darkrai EX did 90-30 for three darks or for two darks and a colorless. Now we see Buzzwell for just one strong energy can match those numbers. Yeah, literally can do the exact same thing that Darkrai was doing years ago for the same amount of energy. Uh, or from just one energy. Yeah, for just one energy, leaving it a lot more open to do other things in the deck. Um, this deck gets to play the Lycanroc, gets to play the Octillery, gets to play all these extra cards instead of trying to put three energies on a Pokemon. They're just yep. throwing that one strong energy down and doing a whole bunch of damage. I do like this here, seeing this Oracorio coming into play and putting that early pressure down, you know, getting the damage and everything on the bus full is quite a bit of pressure. Ryan already has that choice band there, which makes it so much more difficult for that bus full to be able to get out of the active position. But I feel like this is the ideal scenario that you want to use the Oracorio in. Yeah. The opponent's got a bus full with one energy and a choice band, so I can come up, hit it, and I... There's almost no way that he's going to be able to knock, to knock out this Oracorio. Yeah. Another real nice thing about this Oracorio, especially in this matchup, is Oracorio is not weak to Psychic. Oracorio is weak to Dark, which most Psychic type Pokemon in the Pokemon trading card game are weak to their own type. They're weak to Psychic. But Oracorio being an exception to that, uh, isn't going to get knocked out by this Mew easily. And it resists the fighting type on the Buzzwool, so it really is kind of a perfect counter for these, these Mews and Mewtwo, uh, sorry, these Mews and these Mew EXs. 
in these other decks trying to counter the Buzzball. Yeah, it is a really great uh, option in this scenario. And also, Mew is weak to the Psychic, so Oracorio will take the knockout on Mew, but not vice versa. So, so many different uses that he can make out of it. Um, Ryan does decide to go with that Brooklyn Hill. We may see his first Rock Ruff come down here. Um, he's got to be able to do something to get out of this sticky situation that Alex has put him in. Yeah. Right now, he's only hitting this Oracorio for 20 damage if he uses a Jet Punch. Sure, he gets that 30 on the bench, too, but... While getting two shot by this Oracorio that you're only doing 20 damage to, it's yeah, just it's not something that feels good at all. <laughs> yeah, the, the Oracorio really being the star of Alex's deck in this matchup, and I mean, that's exactly what he intended it to do, so. Um, pulling its weight for sure. And he doesn't have any way to get out of the active at this point because he did already use his energy attachment to the turn on that Rock Ruff. So that Buster is staying there and it's going to do the 20 damage. Um, not sure where he's going to put 30 in the end. And there we go again, those two Brooklyn Hills in the discard pile. Ryan saying, get out of here. I don't need you. Um, and I will say this is also the first time that Alex is the one that put down the Brooklyn Hill. Every other game we've seen it in the pink sleeve. So it's come from Ryan's side of the board. But Alex finally got his opportunity to put his Brooklyn in. <laughs> Yeah, so he got rid of one one Brooklyn Hill. So he still got those two dead Brooklyn Hills sitting in his deck. Uh, those can be you want to get those out of the deck by the late game. They can be really bad to draw into off an end late game. You can you can't play them down because you, there's already one in play. So you can't abyssal hand and draw more cards. Uh, they just kind of sit there and don't do anything unless you ultra ball or sycamore them. Alex plays his hand down to zero cards. He does have the artillery in hand before, but he does top deck the sycamore. So just a free fresh seven cards for Alex. He does have a fighting energy. He's got a max elixir in there, so a couple different things that he can go for. Um, I'm assuming he's really just going to just try to knock out this puzzle with the Oracorio again. It's not really reason to do anything else. It, it's got to feel nice when you're using a one energy, non GX, non EX attacker. Doesn't have to put much commitment at all to take a knockout, you know, a two hit knockout on its own against another Buzzhold GX, one of Ryan's main attackers, and all in the meantime, it's taken only 20 damage. Yeah, I expect here we're going to see Alex kind of split up his energy. He's probably put one on a Rock Ruff, one on this Buzzhold GX, so that either way, the the um, Pokemon can go and take a big knockout right. within the next turn for just one energy. He does decide to go onto the uh, the promo Rock Ruff instead of the corner Rock Ruff, just in case of some like cute little plays he can do with maybe corner on an artillery, kind of things like that. I, I feel like it's more likely for him to use corner than it would be to use the other promo rock ruff itself. So yeah. a couple of different things that can be done there. Yeah, so he just decides it's probably not going to matter, but it's a small thing that, that could matter in the end. That uh, That's a lot of things that a lot of uh, top players will do. They'll make these little micro decisions that maybe they won't matter, and 90% of the time they don't, but that like that, that like 1%, 2% of the time that they do matter, it's really big. Ryan just, again, he, you never want to see that rock rough with the energy. That is the last thing you want on your opponent's uh, side of the board. So anytime it's come down, every single time we've seen the rock rough one energy from Alex, Ryan has immediately responded with either a Guzma or a Bloodthirsty Eyes in order to take out that, uh, take it out. Uh, now we're going to see a double knockout too. We're going to see this rock rough go down and the uh, artillery. This could mean that, uh, that means ends kind of back in play for Ryan in a way. Yep. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we see one this turn if he has it in his hand. Um, putting himself also down to four prizes to be able to match up Alex has got to feel pretty comfortable, especially having already 70 damage on Alex's Buzz Wolf. Meaning that all you really need to do is do one big knockout with either Dangerous Rogue or Buzz Wolf on a fresh GX like the Buzz Wolf that's on the bench with the energy. Um, and then the other two prizes can come from something a little bit simpler, like only dealing with that 70 damage Buzz Wolf with, uh, for example, the Mew. If the Mew hits it with some energy, it already hits for 120, and that's a perfect knockout with that 70 damage. Ryan here kind of pulls a trick out of Alex's book and benches that pseudo Wudo, getting ready to use it. We've seen Alex both games one and two go for this pseudo Wudo, but Ryan hasn't really put a big focus on it. Uh, this game, he's like, okay, I'm going to bench it, and I'm going to use it I, against you. And I mean, he does recognize, though, that this is a very real scenario that this bustle is going to come up and hit for the 190 damage, you know, with either a max switcher or an energy switch from that Oracorio. So he understands that, and he says, I have to be ready for it. I don't want just the option of dangerous rogue bus wolf if I need to. Um, I want you, you whatever I need. And kind of interesting that he hops to bench that rock, that Reggie rock there, just because, well, he goes for the full bench, doesn't really care, because he puts himself in the damage range for the dangerous rogue. Alex here just decides, okay, I'm just going to attach to this. Oh, he's going to take the knockout on this. This rock rough, and that's going to be <laughs> pretty big too. Both players just kind of trading back and forth at these rock roughs. Probably put 30 damage on that Mew, because the Mew can get two shot and give him a free prize card if he's able to do another jet punch. 
Uh, putting them at odd, odd prices, but odd prices aren't as bad when you're able to take these knockouts on these little, these free basics on the bench. Now, if Ryan has a Guzma here, I'm not sure if he does, but if he does, I would like to see, or I feel like he wants to see a Guzma on that bench puzzle. Yeah. The Muse already got 30. Let's use it before it goes down to do that perfect math. It's sitting there. He set that up from the beginning of the game. Now he needs to be able to take advantage of it. Yeah. I could see him going from the top of Lele here if, to, in order to grab it. I did definitely a couple of ways that he could pull this off. Yeah, if he's able to hit like maybe one elixir over the next couple turns and a basic fighting, he's got the basic fighting in hand, but also three fighting energies in hand. So not not ideal on, on that course, but he's gonna go and I would assume that you're right. I, I think he's gonna go grab the Lele here. He does ditch his second rock rough though, so again, telegraphing that over to Alex oh, and letting him know, hey, I'm done. I don't I am not going to use Dangerous Rogue this game. I'm not going to use Bloodthirsty Eyes this game. That's yeah. a pretty big signal from Alex's side. A, on, and from Ryan, that shows that he feels confident. He says, I'm, this game's not going to last much longer anyways. It's only going to be going for a couple more turns, so I'm fine with removing that option from myself. Ryan sees that he does not actually have the Lele in deck. I think he actually discarded it. Yeah, he probably... Yeah, that's, that's, that's the only excuse for that. He only plays one uh, type of Lele GX. In fact, both players are only playing one copy of type of Lele GX. So maybe he'll go for... Uh, a buzz will play this turn and try to get like a little abyssal hand for like one or two. Maybe try to get a uh, a big buzz will take a knockout this turn. That's the only other way that he's able to. Oh, he had it in his hand. <laughs> there you That's go. That's why. I was like, I don't really know if it got discarded, but yep. Then we do see that Guzma coming down from the Lele. I saw him actually move the uh, Guzma to the bottom of the deck as he was shuffling, so I was like, oh, I guess he's uh, got a way to be able to grab it anyways. There we go. Yeah, that's exactly what Ryan needs to be doing here. He's going to take this knockout. He's going to put 30 on the bench. I believe he's even got to be able to draw one card off of Missile Hand. Yeah. Uh, so he can look for that Max Lux or anything off the top. See if he can get that energy onto the bus wheel. I just like if he can actually just draw a max elixir here and hit it, he probably would see. The top deck is the max elixir. The issue is how many fightings? One, two. Am I a seer? Three, what what was four, that? If five. he hits this max elixir here, I feel like that's spot. gonna seal the game on his spot. Whether it goes to the bus wheel or the pseudo udo, either play is just gonna put him in such a oh, last, the last card. energy. So he hits that max elixir. Puts him in a comfortable spot. Ryan Sablehoss is gunning for this win. So there is one issue here is that the Oracorio is probably going to be the one to take this next knockout. Um, so the Oracorio is going to take the, the one prize knockout. Uh, this Mew is going to go down. And then Ryan cannot knock out this uh, Oracorio. The Oracorio is still sitting there being just this huge nuisance to Ryan. Right. He's, we're going to have to see a couple different things. Either Ryan's going to have to find an N or a Guzma, one or the other, in order to be able to get out of this situation. An N, hopefully, to just put Alex down to a small hand. He doesn't have the artillery out, so he's it, it's a way to be able to kind of shut him down. And obviously, if he finds the Guzma, he's already got an energy, I believe, in hand, so that would just seal him the game right there. Uh, Ryan cannot attack with this buzzle. He cannot well he cannot knuckle impact with this buzzle because that pseudo is just sitting there on the bench. Well if, he, if he knuckle impacts though, he's hopefully doing it to seal the game. Yes, he end. can't knuckle impact the Oracorio. Right. He can't deal with the Oracorio in one attack. And I mean again, recognizing his path to victory, he puts the 30 damage onto the buzzle and says, I don't even want to have to look for a choice ban. I just want the Guzma. That's all that I'm gonna be looking for. So and I love the confidence that's pouring out of Ryan because it just forced Alex to put, to do almost what Ryan wanted to do for him, right? I think Alex just went for that end. He's gonna put himself down to three cards, Ryan to two, but Ryan does have the abyssal hand there that Alex doesn't have. So he's gonna have a better time drawing out of this to be able to look for that Guzma. Yeah. Alex is only gonna get those three cards and he's gonna be stuck on that unless he draws into something. Uh, it just shows how big knocking out that artillery is in this matchup. Um, the entire deck's draw power is built off of that Octillery. Uh, you use your Brooklyn Hell Engine to get that out as fast as you possibly can. This deck plays a thinner count of Tapu Lele than pretty much any other like of the b main big decks in format. Yep. So he's not, he doesn't really have um, a way out of this other than drawing just into a supporter card. Right. So I mean, Alex is really putting a lot of risk on this play when he goes for this end, but I feel like, I mean, Ryan did not have the Guzma there, but I can only imagine, you know, there's a lot more to the game than just what we're seeing on the table. There's a psychological aspect and everything that comes out of it. With Ryan oozing that confidence that I know he does when he's in these top positions, he puts Alex into a position that says, I have the Guzma, you need to play an end. Yeah. If not, I'm going to win the game. I'm actually not sure if he had it either. I don't believe he, he did. did 
So yeah, Alex is just... Riot has instilled the fear in his opponent. He actually to, almost put himself in a better scenario because he only has two cards now and he's he able to abyssal hand. He's able to draw into these new cards that he wasn't able to before. Uh, Alex decides to bring up... Okay, so here he can... Bloodthirsty eyes, looks like. <laughs> oh! And, Ryan and the game is over. Oh. Ryan Sablehall's 2-1 over Alex Szymanski. He just shows him the Guzma off that end. Uh, both ends. Heartbreaking for Alex. He thought he might be able to pull this out, but narrow victory for Ryan. He set that up perfectly, ready to go with the energy and the Guzma right there. Games 2 and 3. Uh, or games are, Yeah, whatever. 1 and 3. 1 and 3, yeah. Flash it. That's it. Yeah, That's he, all he needed to do. End to, end to 2. Has the cards right there. Wow, what an incredible back and forth series from yeah, two actually, incredible top level players. Yeah, for what what we got out of that, we got the Buzzwool Lycanroc Mirror that sometimes people, it's not everyone's favorite matchup to watch all the time, but that was a very good series, very back and forth. That game three uh, looked like Ryan was kind of in a, a little bit of a hole, but he was able to pull himself out of it and like really take one. Yeah. Uh, we thought that Alex's Oracorio might have been the difference maker there, but unfortunately for him, it was it fell a little bit short. Yep. Uh, as the Mew was able to put that 30 damage on the bench and, and take some cheaper knockouts as we went through the game. Absolutely. Now, don't go anywhere, guys. We will be back in just a moment with a quick interview with that winner from Ryan Sablehow. So it was just a minute, and we'll have him on here to see how he's feeling after that intense match. Prices for Pokemon cards have been red hot.